The seller of this Nintendo 64 said he bought it on Facebook Marketplace, and then he heard a pop and nothing would show up on the TV. He took it to a repair shop who said they couldn't fix it. So let's see if we can fix it. Now, normally when I get these in, I will try to turn them on and see what happens. But I think in this case, since there's clearly something going on on the board, I think we just need to take it apart and have a look on the inside. So in order to get into this one, we're gonna be using the GameBit 4.5. These screws are very tight. Makes me feel like whatever repair shop they took this to might not have even taken it apart. It wouldn't surprise me because there's probably, you can only charge so much for something like this because you can go buy a working used one for not too much. I don't know how much they go for. I know broken ones like this one, I paid $40 for it, which is probably a little on the high side. You can get them for less than that on eBay. Oh yeah, these are really tight. I think they took her to a repair shop and the repair shop probably didn't say they couldn't fix it. They probably said, we don't fix those. From a repair shop perspective, you could charge, you know, $200 for a PS5 HDMI port repair, or you could charge, I don't know what, maybe 20 to $40 to repair this and probably would take about the same amount of time. My bit slipped a, bit, a little bit on this one. These game bits, I don't like for anything where it's really tight in there. Okay. I don't know that I've ever even taken apart one of these originals. I've taken the special edition one apart, but it looked totally different than this. So I'm kind of assuming it just comes apart. Yeah, okay. So the top just comes off like that. A little dirty inside. Oh, we got, looks like maybe something dripped in here. Oh yeah. That looks disgusting. I don't know what that is, but that looks pretty gross. It is pretty dirty inside as well, but I don't know, I don't see anywhere that any liquid got, you know, down on the board, but let's get this metal plate off and then we can see the board a little bit better. Okay, now. Doesn't want to come off. I'm guessing these two, these two, and then it looks like, does this just come off? Yeah, okay, that piece comes off. Looks like this piece might also come off. So let's get these screws out next. All right, and then this, does this come off? Yeah, this piece comes off. Okay, what do we got here? Oh, two more screws, one there and one there. Now, oh, okay, now that comes off. All right, now can we get, oh yeah, that comes right up. And we've got some thermal pads. We've got the exoskeleton of a bug, it looks like. That's handy. Okay, here is the board. It's definitely dirty. Bunch of little debris on this board. Some kind of like hair and dust bunnies. But I don't see anything, like normally these capacitors could cause a popping sound. They actually all look really good though. They're not bulged, they're not leaking. I don't see any issues so far on this board. If you see the issue and I'm missing it, timestamp it and tell me what you see in the comments. So I think what I wanna do is remove this whole board out of here. So I need to remove these four screws. And I think that's all. All right, and these pins, that's the power port though, that shouldn't, necessarily cause an issue. Let me show you the pins there though. These things are pretty gunked up, but I don't see anything major going on there. This is the output port for the TV. So, and that's what they said the issue was, is it stopped putting out anything to the TV. And I don't initially see anything on the bottom of the board either. Usually if there's a pop, that means something's burned out. Oh, wait, here we go. What do we got down here? It's kind of hard to see in this light, but down there on that chip, I think we have a problem. Let's get under a microscope and check it out. Okay, so right down. Oh yeah, look at that. That is pretty gross looking, but I think uh, let's get it cleaned up and then we have a better look at it. Just gonna use a toothbrush with some isopropyl alcohol. 
Now we do have a donor board that I can steal this chip from, so that's not a big deal. We can get that done here in a minute, but I just want to take a look at some of these other chips and just see if we see anything that looks like it might have caused a pop. I'm not 100% confident that this is the only chip in here that's been affected, but I don't. I also don't see anything else. Eww, that doesn't look great. Oh, now that's gross. What kind of bug is that? That is a crazy looking beetle. So what I'm gonna do is get this chip replaced. I'm gonna steal one from a donor board and then we'll get it replaced. And then we'll give this board a good cleaning. And then we can put it back together and see if that's all it was. And I'm actually gonna do the cleaning right now. I just can't stand to see it look this bad. It's just so gross. I'm not gonna give it like a super thorough cleaning as Robert does on the Restores channel, but I do wanna make sure that this nastiness is out of here. I feel kind of gross even working on it. It's just, there's just so much debris down in here. Bugs, hair, dust, who knows what else. Use my toothbrush and some isopropyl alcohol just to clean all these solder joints off, clean the tops of these chips. That'll help make sure they have good contact with the thermal pads. Now we do have a couple switches here and I'm gonna use some BW100 down in those. That'll get down in there and hopefully clean the contacts really well. It's one of the things I like about BW100 is it is aerosolized, so it's easy to spray down into kinda of tight places like this. This video is not sponsored by them, but it is a product that I like to use for stuff like this. You can also use it just down on the board as well. It works really well for cleaning all of this stuff off too. Okay. I'm feeling much better about that. Now let's get this chip replaced. Now this is really close to some important plastic parts. So I'm using Kapton tape to hopefully prevent any meltage from going on over here. I'm gonna be using my hot air soldering station to heat up this chip until the solder melts. Then I will place the replacement chip and let the solder solidify. And then we can try it out and see if it works. All right, everything's nice and cool now. Let's see if we melted anything. That's always the fun part. Let's see what we ruined after trying to fix it. <laughs> I don't think I ruined anything. I think it turned out okay, but it always makes me nervous. Oh yeah. I'm trying to see, it looks like that got a little warm right there. Button still works good, so I don't think that's anything to worry about. It definitely got a little too warm though. Other than that, I think it all looks pretty good. Let's get under the microscope and just recheck this chip and make sure all those joints look good. Okay, and just make sure these legs are soldered on solidly, which they all seem to be so far. Yep, those are all good. I don't see any issues with these vias, so I think we're good there. Everything's cleaned up good. I'll clean this up one more time, but I think this is all good. So let's get this thing back together and see if that's all it took to fix it. Okay, I can't put it together with this nastiness on there though. We gotta figure this out. That is just, oh, it's all sticky. That's disgusting. Let me get this so you can see it. You don't wanna miss this. Oh yeah, look at all of that. So gross. Let's come in with a little isopropyl alcohol. Try and get that cleaned up a little better. Man, I should have sent this over to Restorish for Robert to clean this up. This is actually quite nasty, this part of it anyway. There we go. I don't know what that was, but that's fairly disgusting. There we go. All right, now I gotta get the rest of this thing put back together. So this metal plate and these two screws, then this little metal plate over here, and this little metal plate over here. Black screws go on these inside ones, and the short ones with the little funky washers go on the outside ones. 
And if you want to make sure you don't misthread them, thread them the opposite way until you feel it kind of click, and then go the correct way. Then we just fill in the holes around the edge with these screws. They're all the same size. We don't put a screw there, we do put a screw there. There we go. Now the top goes on, and then the case screws go on, and then we can test it. All together, all hooked up. Let's see if it powers on. Oh, it does not power on. Wow, just nothing. I just didn't have the power cable plugged in. <laughs> okay, so I've got the memory pack installed. I've got the game installed. I've got the power supply in. I have the cable to the TV in, and I have a controller connected. Let's power it on. Oh, we get a red light. I think that's good. And we have something on the screen. There we go. So this Nintendo 64, all it took to fix was that one little chip that had a little bit of corrosion on it. If you like these types of repairs, a while back I bought a broken Nintendo 64 that was the special edition Pokemon Pikachu edition. If you want to see that video, I'll put it up on your screen now so you can come hang out with me over there and see if I can fix that one. Thanks so much for watching today and I hope you have a good one.